Ratios are a way of comparing two numbers. The order of the numbers is important and it must match the words. So here we'll practice. It says a math class has 20 men in a class of 30 students. Write the ratio of the men to the total number of students. So those words tell you which numbers to use and in what order to put them in. So we have 20 men and 30 students. So we're going to write in word form, we would write 20 to 30. Here it says do not simplify, so we just leave it like that. Colon form, we would write the 20 still has to come first because the, the men come first in this problem. So we'd write 20 to 30. We still read it in the same way. There's just a colon between the two numbers. And the final way we can write a ratio is in fraction form. The word that's men mentioned first is the number that goes on top. So we have 20 over 30. And this does say to simplify. So we'd want to divide both by 10 to reduce those fractions. And we have 2 to 3. And that's how we read that. Because it's still a ratio, we read it as 2 to 3. So this is write the ratio as a fraction in lowest terms. So we have 6 and 1 fourth over 27 and 1 half. Let's start by rewriting those fractions as improper fractions. So we'll take 6 times 4, remember, is 24, and then we'll add 1, and we get 25. So this is really 25 over 4 for the top fraction. We'll do the same thing on the bottom. 27 times 2 is 58. And 58 plus 1 is 59. So the bottom fraction is 59 over 2. And we talked back in our fraction chapter, um, chapter 3, about complex fractions. It was at the end of that chapter, but we want to multiply by the common denominator for the two small fractions. In this case, that's 4. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 4 and this fraction by 4. Here, that just makes the 4 cancel out, and it leaves me with 25 on top. Here, it makes this 4 become a 2 because it's really dividing this one by 2 and dividing this one by 2. So we have 59 times 2 is 118. So now we have 25 over 118. Now we can use our calculators to help us simplify this. You can just type in 25 and then your fraction button and then 118. And you get back exactly 25 over 118, which means it's already reduced. This is as simple as it gets. A history class has 18 women and 10 men. Write the ratio in colon form of the women to the total number of students. So we have 18 women, so that's going to be our first number. And then it says in colon form, so we'll have a colon. And then it wants for our second number the total number of students. Well, we're not given that specifically in this problem, but we know we have 18 women and 10 men, so that tells us we have 28 total students, so that would be our second number. This time it says simplify our answer, so it was a little bit like reducing a fraction. We want to divide by the biggest number we can think of that goes into both of them. So we'll divide both of those by 2. 28 divided by 2 is 14. Now there's nothing that goes into both 9 and 14, so this is in simplest form. A unit rate is a ratio that compares two numbers with different units. The ratio is divided so that the second number is 1. Unit rates are often read with the word per, like miles per hour, miles per gallon, dollars per minute. Those are all unit rates. And remember that per 
tells us to divide. So with this problem says we have 90 gallons of water flowed through the hole a hose in nine minutes. Find the unit rates of gallons per minute. So these words are telling you basically what to do. The gallons is listed first, so we'll have 90 gallons. Per tells you to divide. And then it says minutes, second. So we use the nine minutes second. So 90 divided by 10, 90 divided by nine is 10 gallons per minute. And sometimes that would be written as 10 gallons and then a slash. And that means the same thing. This is a unit rate. It really means that 10 gallons are flowing every one minute. The second unit is one now. Determine the unit price for the nearest tenth to the nearest tenth of a cent and then determine the better buy for the following situations. So because this says to the nearest tenth of a cent, we want to make sure our money is all in cents. So let's look at option A. Option A said it was $1.58. Remember that that means it's really 158 cents. It's a unit price, so we put our price first, money first, 158 cents divided by 12 eggs. And that gives us 13.16666. And, and it keeps going. Now it says to the nearest tenth of a cent, so we went around that place. The number after it's a six, so this is going to go up. And then we wouldn't write anything after it. So option A is 13.2 cents per egg. So now we're going to do the same thing with option B. We want this in cents, so we're going to have 255. Remember, it's moving the decimal place two places to the right. So we would take 255 and we'll divide by 18 eggs. And this gives us 14.1666. It keeps going. So again, we want to round to the nearest tenth of a cent. So this is in the tenth spot. The number after tells us to go up. And then we'll leave out that so we get 14.2 cents per egg. So that answers the first part of the question. It says to determine the unit price to the nearest tenth of a cent. And then it says then determine the better buy. So the better buy would be the cheapest price. 13.2 cents or 14.2 cents? Well, 13.2 cents is cheaper, so option A is the better buy. And that will help you do the homework for this section.